Hello and welcome to the garden. So today I'm going to be harvesting some of our winter squash. Now these plants could stay here up until the first frost. The frost will take them out and potentially damage the fruit as well. So that's the last point at which I would want to harvest them before the frosts come. But actually looking at them, they're ready to go now. Um, I've just taken a quick peek at the butternut squash. There are a few, if any, that are still quite green. Most of them have their proper beige skin color now and they're not growing anymore. The plants are looking pretty tired. So I don't think there's much point in leaving them here. We've got a few days of nice weather. We've just had some horrendous weather, but we've got a few days now of some nice weather. And I think I will take them now and then I'll put them in crates in the greenhouse to dry off and, and to get those skins nice and hard so that they store well. So even though I could leave these plants for a little while yet, we're, we're certainly not getting frosts here for some weeks. I think today is a pretty good time to bring them in. So this big fella is a blue Hubbard. It's not a bad looking squash. Um, it hasn't really been growing much for a while. If I just cut this one here, let's have a look. Oh, that's quite a hefty specimen. Now, it can be a good idea to put something on the ground underneath the fruits so that the uh, wet soil doesn't damage the skin. But actually, this is all completely solid. It's a bit warty here, but there's no problem. This skin is rock hard. And our, our ground here is really very free draining. So I don't normally bother to put anything under the fruit, but if your ground tends to the damp side, then it's well worth doing. But that is going to be, that's going to be great. This, got, this has got such a thick, hard skin on it that I'm sure this is going to store pretty well. The danger point with squash is always around the stem here. So I tend to cut the, the vine, leaving a few inches each side of the stem rather than cutting the stem. Because if it's going to start to decay anywhere, it's going to be here through the, through the stem. Well, it's not a bad sized butternut, that one. Got some weed in here. And again, I will cut the stems either side. Perfectly sound on the bottom. Yeah, that's going to be a nice, a nice fruit. I'm fairly pleased with that harvest. The Hubbard only gave us one fruit, but I've had another Hubbard squash out on the, uh, what we call our dirty compost heap. It's a compost heap we've started with um, things like grass clippings and, and dirty weeds, weeds with either perennial roots or um, potentially 
lots of seed and stuff that I don't want to compost in the kitchen garden itself. We've been growing a couple of plants out there and I've got one blue hubbard on that heap that's produced three fruits but just the one from here but it is quite a whopper so um, that's going to be worth quite a few meals. Um, I've had two butternut squash here. I'm pretty happy with the productivity of these. This is um, I think what have I got 15 fruits here and they're all a pretty good size so I'm quite happy with those. There are two that aren't in great condition. Now I'm not sure exactly what has caused this but this particular fruit has some splits in it. It's not that uncommon to get one or two splitting but this is all gunky and, and unpleasant here. I, I'm not sure what this sort of sticky jelly-like residue is. Um, the squash itself seems perfectly sound. It's, it's rock solid but these splits are unpleasant and of course it's not going to keep in that condition. The skin has to be pretty much perfect for these to, to keep well. So if you find any that are damaged like this these need to be eaten first so I don't know this might be on the menu in the next week or so. Now that I've picked the fruits I'm going to crate those up and get them in the greenhouse where they can stay reasonably warm and most importantly dry now for a few weeks and allow those skins to really harden off. Then I can clear these beds ready for next season. So I was debating whether I might do a little bit of winter digging here in this border because uh, the, the beds are very nice. The soil's a reasonable texture, it's quite light. We sieved those years ago. We've put tons of organic matter in and it's kept them in good condition. The borders though are pretty horrid. We've got one new border in the garden this year. That's rock hard. But even this old border, which has had tons of organic matter on it over the years, it's still pretty compact and unpleasant. I wasn't 100% happy with the way the onions grew in here, so I'm not going to use it for onions again. And in fact, I think what I'm going to do is keep this as a dedicated squash bed. Now, usually I do like to rotate my crops, so the, the main beds are uh, rotated fairly regularly. I've got a four-year rotation here now. I, I, I was running a six-year rotation but we took a couple of beds out to put the polytunnel here. I took another bed out with asparagus so that's changed it a little bit but I've got a, a four-year rotation on those beds. Roots, brassicas, legumes and alliums and I'm sure that will be absolutely fine but this border I think from now on it's going to be a dedicated squash bed and we'll see how it goes. If, if in a few years time I start to see a build up of problems in the border then I'll move things around but the squash really grow very well here and they always have. Um, in our previous garden layout we had two borders on this side. The, the garden was, was longer and we would alternate it one year the squash would be here and another year it would be in the other border. But now we've got just the, the one, it's fine, it's plenty of room. Um, but the squash have always grown really well along this, along this border so I think that's all it's getting next year. Maybe some broad beans along the, along the fence again like I did in the spring but otherwise I'm going to reserve this for the winter squash. I'll be able to put a few more plants in here which is great because we love the winter squash. It's one of our most important winter crops along with things like the carrots and the parsnip. So anyway, that's the plan. I will just clear all this debris away and put on another thick mulch of organic matter, undoubtedly horse compost. And yeah, I'll just keep it hopefully reasonably weed free until next May when the new plants will go in. So I've just brought those in to the greenhouse here with the remainder of the harvest. So these three blue hybrids, they came from the dirty compost heap. 
And then I've got more of these delicata squash. Now, I've got quite a few fruit here, but I did have quite a few plants and I'm not that impressed with either the growth of the plants or their productivity, to be honest. I don't know this delicata squash. Um, I know of it and I've grown sweet dumpling, which is closely related rather than an elongated squash. That, that's a, a short one. It's a really nice squash and I may well go back to that next year. They seem to have pretty good skins on them and they're just starting to color up some of these. So if we compare two of these delicata squash, this one set much earlier in the year, this one is pretty much ripe and this is a younger specimen. Now in all of the grooves here, there's this dark green stripe. They're actually rather attractive. You get exactly the same coloring on the sweet dumpling squash. But as it ripens, that dark green turns to orange. And you can see perhaps on the camera, if you can just make it out, a few of those stripes have started to go orange on this one. And the skin is a lot more yellow in color. So um, th this one is obviously riper. They're both in perfect condition to eat now. Um, but as they go into storage, I will take this riper one before, before this one. These won't store or aren't supposed to store quite as long as some of the other squash. Uh, they're supposed to have a fairly thin skin, but these feel like they've got quite a tough skin on them, at least as thick as the, the butternut. Now the butternut actually is quite interesting because normally if you want a long storing winter squash, then the thicker skins are better. So in theory, the blue hubbard should store longer than the butternut. But actually, my experience is that the butternut squash will still for a remarkable length of time, as long as it's kept in reasonable condition. So it wants to be somewhere cool. And the really important thing is not too humid. So in recent years, we have stored them in our sheds here and it's a bad place because it's far too damp. So this year, these are going in to the garage and they'll be here in the greenhouse for a few weeks just to allow those skins to dry up and toughen up and then they're going to go in the garage it's a lot more airy it's a lot less damp and hopefully these will store a lot longer but they should store way into next year so they should be good for months and uh, it's quite important to keep an eye on them and any that show signs of decay and the most likely place if the skin is undamaged the most likely place is somewhere around the stem. So that's the place to keep an eye on. Any sign of decay there, then you gotta use it pretty quickly. But um, yeah, these should be pretty good. I think next year it's back to sweet dumpling, though I will reserve judgment on that until we've tasted the delicata. This tray at the end is quite interesting because this has the fruits that came from those that we trained vertically. So we had a small length of trellis in the garden in one of the beds, and then we had some growing in an old bathtub and they climbed up some wires on the wall. Um, there are a couple of decent sized specimens. They came from the plants in the bathtub, quite the opposite to what I would perhaps have thought. Um, I would have expected the larger fruits to come from those that had their feet in the ground. But on the other hand, they only produce two decent fruits and a couple of tiddlers, one of which we've eaten already. The rest of these came from the, uh, the trellis and yeah, this is, they're, they're fine. I mean, they're good fruits, they're ripe. There's nothing wrong with them at all, but they are a lot smaller than those that were growing in the border. So I, I just found that a little bit interesting. I haven't trellised these before, so I wasn't sure what to expect. Now, obviously I don't want really thumping grapefruits trying to hang off of the trellis they'd probably break without some extra support but it was interesting to see that all of the small fruits like this tiddler they all came from the the trellised vines i don't know if that's to be expected but that's what happened this year Now the final specimen in here 
is one trombuccino squash that we've allowed to mature. It's not a particularly large one of these. I understand these can get much bigger. All the seeds are up in this part of the, of the fruit. And you can see, perhaps from, from this specimen now, that, that this is much more closely related to a butternut squash than it is to um, things like courgettes, even though this is usually used as a summer squash. So this is our first year growing this funny beast. And as a summer squash, we've actually been fairly impressed with it. Um, it's produced plenty of fruit and they're pretty good quality. Now, none of the summer squash have the flavor of the winter squash. And I understand that this does not make a good winter squash, though it will keep into the winter. I understand that the butternuts have much more flavor and, and actually even the butternut is a relatively poorly flavored squash compared with, with some of the others. We, we love the butternuts, they're, they're sweet and pleasant, but there are lots more squash that have a richer flavor. And this one is supposed to be rather poorer than the butternut as a winter squash. As a summer squash, we've really enjoyed it. And one nice thing about it is that this length of it has no seed in it. So all of the flesh in there is a, is a lot more firm than say with a courgette. So I am planning to grow this again. Um, I will be interested to see what this is like as a winter squash, but I haven't got high expectations of it. Well, the squash harvest is one of my favorite days in the kitchen garden, certainly at this time of year, when um, my favorite crops, the tomatoes, the peppers and the chilies, they're all done with really. Got a few peppers left ripening up, but they're basically finished and, and the most exciting day for me at this time of year is looking at the squash harvest until you root around in the plants and, and start cutting them back. You never know what might be lurking under the foliage and I'm pretty happy with this harvest. I think some of the plants haven't performed really well, but the two butternuts that we had in the border, they've done fantastically well. Seven or eight fruits per plant from an old fashioned butternut, that's Waltham butternut. That's pretty good going, I think. So I'm quite happy with that. Anyway, that is all for this video. Thanks very much for watching and bye for now.